Hi guys, it's Goose here, and in this video we're going to look at whether Mick Taylor regretted leaving the Rolling Stones or not. Mick Jagger told Rolling Stone in 1995, I think he had a big contribution. He made it very musical. He was a very fluent melodic player, which we never had, and we don't have now. Neither Keith nor Ronnie Wood plays that kind of style. It was very good for me working with him. I could sit down with Mick Taylor, and he would play very fluid lines against my vocals. And he was very pretty, and it gave me something to follow, to bang off. Some people think that's the best version of the band that existed. In December 1974, Mick decided to quit the group, leaving the Rock Hikens without their most technically gifted guitarist. Taylor had joined the band in 1969 after Mick Jagger and Keith Richards had fired Brian Jones for his drug dependency. Previously, he'd been playing with John Mayle and the Blues Breakers. And when Jones and the Stones parted ways, Mayle suggested that Mick join the group. He made his live debut at a free concert in Hyde Park, London on July the 4th, 1969. At a party on December the 12th, 1974, Mick informed Jagger that he was departing the group and then just walked out. Now there appears to be several reasons why Mick actually left the Stones, and one of them is the issue over writing credits. Although according to Mick Taylor, this was not the main motivation. He says, I was a bit peeved off not getting credit for a couple of songs, but that wasn't the whole reason. I guess I, I decided to leave the group and start a group with Jack Bruce. I never really felt, and I don't know why, but I never really felt I was going to stay with the Stones forever, even right from the beginning. While the Rolling Stones were working on their album It's Only Rock and Roll in Munich, Mick Taylor couldn't make it to some of the recording sessions because he suffered from acute sinus problems and needed to undergo surgery. When he finally recuperated and went back to playing with the Stones, he and Keith Richards didn't get along. It wasn't sudden though. Speaking about the time when they were working on Exile on Main Street in 1972, Mick Taylor told Classic Rock, Keith wasn't at his most communicative then. He wasn't as outgoing. I'm choosing my words carefully here, but instinctively, yeah, we got on. In October 1974, ahead of the release of It's Only Rock and Roll, Mick Taylor stated that he co-wrote two songs with Mick Jagger, Till the Next Goodbye and Time Waits for No One. But when Kent showed him the record sleeve, Mick Taylor's name didn't get any songwriting credits. More than that, Jagger actually promised Taylor that he would get the credit. Mick Taylor has said in another interview, I was peeved about not getting credit for a couple of songs. On December, while the other Stone members were partying in London, Taylor told Jagger that he was leaving the band. And when asked about his departure, Taylor finally set the record straight. Yeah, I could write a book about that. From the moment I joined Mail, right up to 1974, I've been working all the time. I was completely used to either being in the studio or being on the road. It was with someone else. I just needed a break. In Keith's autobiography, Life, Keith Richards says of Taylor's playing, the melodic touch, a beautiful sustain, and a way of reading a song. But Keith Richards also calls him shy to the point of being very distant. And Richards also claimed that his departure left the stones in the lurch. Mick Taylor was quite often painted to be the quiet guy. In the studio, he seems to have had a louder voice. Whilst producer Glyn Jones was working in the south of France in 1971, on the Exile on Main Street sessions, he says of Mick Taylor, he turned from being a quiet, softly spoken, charming young man to a raving egomaniac junkie. I was mixing the record and said to Mick Jagger, either he goes or I go. Glyn Johns explains how Jagger asked him to work on the tapes of Exile on Main Street in London after the sessions in France had run riot and people were allowed to do whatever they wanted. Glyn describes working on a track at Basing Street Studios on which Taylor had overdubbed backing vocals, drums and a bass. When Taylor asked Lynn Johns why he had removed them, the producer replied, the Rolling Stones have an effing great drummer and a really great bass player. You, Sunshine, play the guitar and you'll hear it rather nicely when I finish this. It was then left to Mick Jagger to ask the guitarist to leave the studios so Glyn Johns could continue mixing the track to his satisfaction. Mick Taylor would leave the Stones three years later in December 1974 Talking to the Daily Mail, Mick Taylor says, People are always asking me whether I regret leaving the Rolling Stones. I make no bones about it. Had I remained in the band, I would probably be dead. I was having difficulties with drug addiction and couldn't have lasted. But I'm clean now and have been for years. My life is so much better now than being a drug ravaged member of the Stones. So no, I don't regret leaving. But people who really know me ask the other question, whether I regret joining the Stones. To me, that's far more astute. Mick goes on to say, when they asked me to come into the studio in 1969, I thought they just wanted me to play a session. I sort of liked them, but was never passionate about the Stones. 
In some ways, I like the Beatles more. At the first session, I overdubbed the guitar on Honky Tonk Woman, but I thought they were all a little bit vain and full of themselves. After doing guitar parts on three songs, I said to Mick and Keith, if you guys are just going to sit and mess around, I'm going home, I've got things to do. I told them to give me a call if they wanted me to do anything else. The next day, Mick called and asked if I wanted to join. He came and picked me up in his Bentley. I wasn't impressed by all of them. And I think they kind of liked that attitude. Part of the charm of the Rolling Stones, as far as I could see, was that they were not technically very good, but they were very raw and had great ideas. That was part of being a rock musician, especially in America and they always had people around them telling them how great they were. And to try some of this or that, I hated that. Keith in particular was surrounded by people telling him how great he was when he could hardly keep his eyes open. Several times the band almost broke up. Keith had his own separate social scene and it was obvious there was a lot of drug taking. There was also problems traveling to certain countries because of all the drug convictions. When I left John Mayle, I was a London musician with London friends, but because the band wanted to live in France to be tax exiles, I was forced to go along with them. I didn't need to be a tax exile. I didn't have financial problems to hide. It was all very well being with the Stones and apparently making all this money, although no one really knew how much because it was all on paper. But I was losing my friends and missing the scene in London. I began to realize how big an effect the Stones was having on my life. By 1974, I felt I'd gone as far as I could with the band. I didn't think they'd stay together. The records were all doing well, but the band was falling apart. It was in chaos. Mick and Keith weren't talking or working together and it was taking longer and longer to make the albums. So as well as Keith's addiction, there was Mick's frustration and my own disenchantment and disillusionment with them. I was a bit impulsive back then. I had a reputation on stage of being quiet, but off it I wasn't. We used to fight and argue all the time. And one of the things I got angry about was that Mick promised to give me some credit for some of the songs and he didn't. I believed I'd contributed enough, let's put it this way. Without my contribution, those songs would not have existed. There's not many, but enough things like Sway and Moonlight Mile on Sticky Fingers and a couple of others. I took offense and that was a factor in my departure, but I'd never seen being with the Stones as a permanent thing. Mick suggested taking six months off, but I've never been good at taking advice. Maybe I should have listened. When I left, they cut off my money for a year, just like that, but I had to leave because I was frustrated. I had a creative relationship with Mick but I was also bored for a lot of the time. I wanted more and they wanted to remain the same. I also wanted to deal with my drug problems. I believe if I removed myself from that situation, I would sort myself out. I was addicted then using anything I could get. Mick says regarding his royalties from the Rolling Stones, in 1982, they stopped paying me. They'd signed to a different record company and had new contracts and they were advised they didn't need to pay me anymore. Until then, I'd had a contract with the Rolling Stones Records, which was licensed to Atlantic Records, the same contract as the rest of the band. I should have gone to a lawyer, but instead I called them rude words and asked how they could stop paying me. They all know it's not right. In fact, it's outrageous. They get all the money and I get plaudits and praise, even from Mick. I've tried to talk to Mick a couple of times, but I realized that hiring a lawyer is probably the only way they'll take me seriously. But they figure I'm not going to do anything about it. Mick concludes the interview by saying, I'm going to do something about it because it's morally wrong to cut my royalties for those six albums. Guys, I hope this gives you some insights into why Mick Taylor left the Rolling Stones and whether or not he regretted that decision. This is Goose signing out. Take care and see you soon.